the reason I'm dressed up in my finery this morning is because, well, it was brilliant, because when I was standing at that door, one of the lads over there turned around, took one look at me and burst out laughing and then went red and hit his head. I think you would probably agree it's pretty difficult for me to walk anywhere like this without somebody having some sort of reaction. But there's a reason I wear all this clover. Some of the basic stuff is what priests in the Episcopal Church are always wear. But I have with me four items which represent the promises I made when I became the bishop. Great. Out of signs of promises. Makes my life really easy. Nobody ever questions it. Everyone sees me and goes, well, he's obviously something. But let me also point out to you that wearing these outward signs of my promises is also really quite difficult. First time I wore this in anger was in Elgin, the day after I was made bishop. And part of my ritual is I have to put this on at the end so I can give a blessing. Full of power and energy, I put the hat on. It was backwards. My life was made up of moments when the outward signs of my promise make me ridiculed. But I'd rather have the symbols, because keeping promises when people look at me and say, you should turn the other cheek, you should walk an extra mile, you should help out, you should smile, you should be kind, you should be gentle. It's actually quite easy. So when I'm feeling pretty miserable and can't be bothered, people come up to me and say, you know what you should do. The really difficult promises are the ones that you all make. You don't have those outward reminders. Nobody looks at you and says, you made a promise to be good. It's easier for me, because I have to look like this, and harder for you, because rather than me just standing there and people saying, he represents the church. Your promises are only known when you speak about them. Your promises are only known when you live them out. Your promises only are revealed when you do what you've promised to do. So those who come here for confirmation each year, they make promises which they can only live out by showing people what they do. If you make a promise, then hold it deep in here. But find the opportunities to allow other people to see in you, as they so ridiculously can in me, what it is that's important to you. And all I would say to you, and I've said it here so many times, is learn to love. To love one another, to love your fellowship, to love your community, you have a God to love your God, above all, to make sure that you love discipline, with a smile, and a hug, and with care. I don't know if you've met me through an assembly, but my name's Christopher, and I'm the Scottish Episcopalian priest for Lossiemouth, Burghead, Duffus, and Elgin. So what you're doing is actually confirming what your godparents and parents have done on your behalf, or you're actually saying, yes, this is what I want to do. This is confirmation. We need to be in relationship with God. Now, the way that we usually do that is by saying our prayers. That's one of the things that, that, we, that we do in the way that God meets us. And you at Gordonston have a tradition, don't you, where candles are lit, and there's silence, isn't there? And it's in that silence that you meet God. So I'd like to give you all a candle, if I may. So there's yours. There's yours. Now, these, you'll be pleased to know, are 24-hour candles. And what I would like you to do, as part of your preparation, for preparing for your confirmation on the Feast of Candlemas, which is the 2nd of February, which isn't actually that far away, is whenever you say your prayers at the beginning or end of the day, or whenever you do, 
just like that candle. You light the candle, and by the time it's burnt to the bottom, it's a 24-hour candle. You've spent a day with God. On the icon, you can see you've got God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. There's an empty side, isn't there? So who do you think that side's for? Yes, it's for you. I want you to think what's different about the promises you make tonight as to most of the promises you make in your lives. The difference tonight is in a moment you will stand up and you will make promises clearly and loudly in front of all these people sitting behind you and also in the presence of God. But the great joy in our faith is on that morning when it goes wrong. God's not going to punish you. God's not going to tell you off. God's not going to turn God's back on you. Just be asked, try again. Get up, dust yourself down, and try again. Because our faith may be based upon picking up that painful cross. But the person who picked the cross up knew what it was like to be frightened. Knew what it was like to be betrayed. Knew what it was like to be abandoned. Knew what it was like to struggle. So why would that person want to make your life difficult if you struggle yourselves? If you're not able to live up to all the promises all the time. So try and keep your promises. But as I said, none of the rest have managed it all the time. But I don't think God has turned his back on them either. Rejoice, give thanks for tonight, and don't beat yourselves up when you struggle. Your faith is based upon a man who struggled to the very end of his life.